This is a radio kit that you can buy on all your shops. It's a radio kit for an AM radio and in this video I'm going to show you how to build this kit and how to align it and get it working. Now let's have a look at the parts from this Chinese radio. So here is the medium wave uh, coil for the ferret antenna. You can see they have already uninsulated the wires and put some solder on the wire end. Here is the ferret bar. Here is a plastic holder for the ferret antenna that you can mount it in the case. Here is the circuit board which is very well made. You can see that they have not only written the number to the component, they have also written the value. Uh, of the component next to the number, so you don't even need a schematic to build that one. Here is the frequency dial and you can see the hole down there, that's the indicator LED for the radio is on. Here is the uh, cover from the housing, here is the backside from the housing, here is a uh, headphone jack, on off switch and volume control, variable capacitor with a sticker that helps you to tune in the stations later because the sticker will show you which frequency your radio is tuned to the battery holder or battery clips if you want to call it like that, ceramic capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, three coils, one of them is the local oscillator coil and the other two are IF filter coils, uh, a transformer for the audio amplifier because this is an old style audio amplifier, um, complete uh, schematic and instruction how to build it only with a big problem because you can see here is a letter or here are some letters that if you want to call it like that, we can read, but most of the others are in Chinese and I personally can't read Chinese, at least now. <laughs> so it's barely any helpful. It does help a little, um, I've already had a look at it, but it's barely helpful. Well anyway, next to it is the loudspeaker uh, and you can see the foil, that's the package where the components and the case came in. This is two different packages. Here's some uh, screws that help you to mount the components and the circuit board. Uh, typical standard resistors and some other wires that have a cut off top and some solder on the end of it. Okay, that's all you get uh, with this uh, Chinese radio kit, all the components. Now I've built the radio as you can see, it's not yet completed. What's left over is the schematic, the cover for the frequency and the dial glue thingy. Uh, overall I really liked the construction of this kit, it's really well thought out. I mean the way how they hold the ferret antenna is well made, the way how they hold the capacitor is well made, everything just awesome. Really great work. And also I found out, I was looking on the back of the circuit board and I noticed that there are some solar, ti uh, yeah, solar tips that are, uh, not, uh, not solar tips, let's say some connections. Some connections were open. For example, here are some, and here you can see them. Here's for example C, and you can see there is no connection. Here is A, and there is no connection, and so far and so on. And if you have a look at the schematic and the description, they have written down the amount of current that is flowing over these connections. So you actually can measure the current that is flowing in these uh, uh, circuit parts to ensure your radio is working correct. I planned to show you that, but the problem is, um, uh, since the whole uh, uh, manual is written in Chinese, I have no idea what to measure exactly. I mean, which bridges need to be connected to measure the current, uh, and so I just built the radio. As you know, I'm very experienced. I built it after the uh, schematic. Well, I didn't even use the schematic. I only used the PCB itself, because the values from the components are written on the PCB itself. And so I soldered everything together. This transformer is very simple to solder in, there are some hints how you can do it. The only thing I had to look up was the coils, because the colors of the coils. I looked for the uh, German word, for example Schwarz, that means black in German. Uh, I looked for that word and let it translate into Chinese and then I looked on the manual and found out, uh, with some help, I found out that which coil belongs to where. Okay. Um, uh, there are some things that bother me. The one thing is that the antenna, as you can see, is loose. So if you're using this radio practically and it's shaking and the antenna is shaking and so far and so on, what could happen is that these thin wires are going to get broken and you don't want to break them. Uh, also the thin wires were much too long, they were like, uh, let's say, three inch or so, three inch long and as you can see you only need very short wires here to connect it. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the next thing. Um, I'm fine with everything else. The circuit board slides in into the uh, well-placed holders and also the headphone jack acts as some kind of physical holder to this uh, whole construction. There's one screw that also mounts it, but uh, overall it's, it's holding really well in place. Nothing there, no problems there whatsoever. Also these uh, battery terminals are very easy to put in. You just slide them in and they are very tight and hold very good. Uh, the next critic uh, thing is the speaker. So the speaker is just loose. There is nothing that holds the speaker in place. I mean it's held in place by parts of the circuit board and the battery. But if I take out one battery you can just take out the speaker. <coughs> the next thing is um, on the other side. Here you can see that's the uh, control LED telling you that the radio is on and here I would I will later have to glue this on. I know I should have glued it on before I put it in there but I want my radio to be aligned as exactly as possible. I will show you that in the next parts of this video. So this, that the scale and this red uh, line here fits exactly with the scale. I will do some let's say kind of uncommon uh, things. I, I, I think they wanted you uh, the developers wanted you to take this thing and glue it just like as you can see here uh, what was I filming? <laughs> they wanted you to take this thing and glue it just like you can see here so it's uh, exactly on this line and then maybe it does work maybe that's working but if I have a look here oh well it's so if I tune it in my case so if I tune it, the line is there, so maybe I did something wrong, okay, it could be my fault, but I also tried it the other way around, and then I had the same result that the line was kind of somewhere kind of there. So I will have to make this individual so it fits. I will have to figure it out how, to, how it works, but I will definitely figure that out. Okay, the next thing that really disturbs me is this cover. First of all, here you can see the Chinese letters are very cheap, as you can see. From the printing, that's very bad, I don't know, but I've often had this experience with Chinese radios that uh, they write something on it and, and you could even wipe it away with the finger. <laughs> okay, um, and the thing that's really bad is that there's no glue, so there was a protection foil on top of this uh, letter thingy, but on the back side there's nothing wherewith you can glue it, so you have to bring your own uh, glue to glue it to this, uh, yeah, let's say radio thingy. Okay. Um, but overall, I mean this whole thing costs, including shipping, costs less than 10 bucks. This is really an awesome radio. I mean, yeah, there have to be alignments. I will have to align all these uh, coils. This is the local oscillator coil. This seems to be the, uh, this is the first IF, this is the second IF. And also here you can align the antenna coil to the, to the wire capacitor. I'll show you that in the next uh, parts of this video. But I mean, I'm experienced. I know this stuff. But for a beginner, it's... Uh, along with the Chinese manual, well, I think you will get it working. I'm sure you will get uh, it working that it picks up some stations, but for optimization, you have to know your stuff. Okay, so that's what that was the uh, construction video, not completely finished, but more or less completely finished construction video uh, of this Chinese radio kit. So now I'm going to align the local oscillator, I'm going to align this coil and this capacitor. I will align this capacitor in its lowest capacitance and I will align the coil so that we get 985 kilohertz on the frequency counter. The reason why I'm doing this is because if I'm making this capacitor low capacitance the oscillator will not get loaded so much and if it's not so much loaded I think it could be more stable. I have no idea, I'm just guessing. So now I have aligned this variable capacitor on minimum capacitance. And now I'm carefully realigning this coil. I'm turning it clockwise. Oh, it's really hard. So now I've tuned the coil. I'm sorry that I didn't show it on camera, but I had to hold radio with one hand and tune it because it was really hard to tune the coil and I didn't want to break it. And uh, here you can see the frequency now. It's nearly a point on frequency. It doesn't matter if it's point 0.3 or so wrong. So I turned this red coil here. So now I'm going to show the RF alignment on a radio. 
Now I'm going to tune these two coils. I have my setup here, which is my test transmitter with a 1 MHz test signal from my MP3 player. Here is the test signal generator. Here is the antenna from my signal generator, which lays close to the receiver's antenna. I've tuned the radio to 1 MHz. As you can see, I've also added this uh, sticker. And you have to tune it where the star is. You can see there are some, some tiny stars. And on the star, there is the frequency. Now the dial is working, so if I tune it to 1 MHz on the scale, it will also receive 1 MHz. It's working. Okay, I'll turn on the radio and tune, uh, tune maximum volume, so I turned up the volume to maximum. And I can already hear some voice. And at first I'm going to align T4, which is the first IF stage. I'm turning it clockwise. There we go. Now I'm doing the antenna a little bit more away, so it's getting more silent again. So this one has been, the T4 has been aligned and is working now. Now I'm going to align the next IF transformer until I can hear the speech. Ah, it's a little bit too far. Okay, it's working. So now I have aligned these two F IF transformers. There's still one thing to align, which is this uh, um, screw for this uh, antenna. So this is the antenna tuning. I'm turning up the volume. And now I'm turning this capacitor. Well, okay, it doesn't really do anything. I mean, I can tweak it a little bit, but it barely brings anything. So, the radio is working now. So, well, hi there. Now I've found out the problem why the radio is having such a bad sound. This is my multimeter connected to the radio, and the radio is connected to my laboratory power supply. So this is two rechargeable batteries in series. And now I'm connecting it to two normal batteries, which make a bit around three volts. Listen to the audio quality. So obviously this radio has not been designed to work with batteries, I mean rechargeable batteries. Seems like they designed it to work with normal batteries. Unscan. Yeah, I'm sorry. 